Welcome to If These Walls Could Talk. I'm your host and super CEO, Lindsay Liu. Joining me today is Josh Blackman, the founder and CEO of Brownstone Property Group. Josh's management company cares for over 100 properties in New York City, ranging from rentals to condos and co-ops. He's a relentless problem solver and even took it upon himself to solve the rat problem in New York for his clients by designing and engineering the Brownstone bid. Today, Josh is going to share the story of a less than transparent transition and how to unwind some two-timing management. Josh, welcome. Thank you so much, Lindsay. So happy to be here. Um, uh, that was a great intro. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, well, it's a really busy season for us. Um, and when we find when we take on new clients, which we've been doing a lot lately, uh, both condos and rental buildings, that there's some similarity in, in the clients that come on. So, for example, there are typically two reasons why condos and co-ops call us. They're either, number one, they're self-managing and they can't stand it anymore. They need out. Or, number two, their manager is doing a bad job or doing nothing, which is common. Uh, at the building I'm gonna tell you about, uh, the board felt they were working for the manager rather than the other way around. So we turned that around and I'll, I'm gonna explain that. We were hired by a 36 unit condo in December, December 1 of 2023, that was just four months ago. We typically start working before the contract starts so we can hit the ground running. So we were working in November to get things going for December 1. And in the course of that startup process, uh, we got a sense whether the outgoing management, we always do, is professional and whether they have their act together. And in this case, the outgoing manager, they wouldn't return calls. They provided us with data that was handwritten or, you know, scanned pages that had been multiply scanned. So it's like you can't read them. We had a heck of a time getting them to respond and get it together. But we eventually did. And in the course of that, we discovered a couple real problems. The condo had several chronic issues, including... They were paying over thirty thousand dollars a year in electrical bills. The for lighting 36 in the unit. Thirty-six oh, unit for the footprint of that. Like square um, feet? it's a seven-story building. Okay. Um, I, I don't know the square footage offhand, but it's I'd say probably about forty feet wide and and probably forty feet deep. It's a big building. And that's um, thirty thousand dollars for just the common area. Exactly oh, right. No? Yes. Not the um, unit. They do have an ele- uh, not the units. Right. They do have an elevator. But that's still insane. Uh, typical manage, uh, you know, electrical bill should be five thousand dollars a month. Not okay, third, so that's not, what you're expecting. You're yes, like, yes. Okay. So we get in there, we see thirty thousand. And one of the other issues is one of the reasons the bill was so high is you, when you walked in this building, the lighting was so bright, you literally had to wear sunglasses. It was ridiculous. Um, uh, and, how old is this building? How old is the building? It was built in um, 2016. Oh, so it's so pretty new. Very new. And the lighting is all LED, but still ridiculous electrical bills. And here's the problem. Neither management, I don't even know if management even tried, but nobody could figure out where this off switch was for the lighting. They could not turn it off. So it's on 24-7. Ridiculous, you know. Uh, So that was a critical issue. Um, And then the other one was there was a huge development next door uh, and the board didn't know what was going on. They couldn't get contact with the developer. It was bad. And here they're digging in at your foundation, a real bad situation. So um, we started to collect info. Uh, Because we're trying to investigate. In the course of that investigation, I discovered a third problem, which is that um, we looked at their insurance records. I'm an insurance broker, along with other things. And so I know how to read insurance policies and whatnot. But you didn't need that expertise for this. What I discovered is that they had two property and liability policies. You only need one, a property policy to protect the building and a liability policy in case somebody slips and falls. You need one of those for the building. They had two. They also had two finance agreements to pay for each of the uh, two policies. Insane. So they're paying for two policies and they only need one and two finance agreements. Just insane. So what we did there is we talked to all the parties. We talked to the board. Board had no awareness of it. Talked to management and management said, that's not right. It's not possible. I said, it is possible. This is exactly what's happening. I spoke to the brokers and each, there were two insurance brokers, one for each policy. They hadn't been talking to each other. Management hadn't been coordinating them. It was, again, insane. So what did we do? We immediately canceled the lesser policy, the one that was not as good. And we said, give me all the money back for the, for the condo because it shouldn't have happened and, and cancel the finance policy for that policy that we're canceling. Give us all the money back for that. And they gave us most of it back. You know, some of it was earned by the broke, but it's like bad, bad management. We fixed mm-hmm. that immediately, saved them. That, that was a refund of about $11,000. Okay. Um, 
the other issue um, was as to the electricity. So um, the property manager on the job, a guy named Vincent Trunzo, he's a chief of uh, property, uh, director of property Your management. property manager. Yes, Not thank for... you. Yes, Vincent works at Brownstone Property. Before you name someone. <laughs> thank you. Yes, of course, I wouldn't name somebody at another company. Um, so Vincent brought in one of our trusted electricians. Um, and after a bit of looking, uh, they found an access panel. That's a panel that covers a hole in the wall, right? It's not an electrical panel. It's an access panel. They open the access panel, and the access panel is in a, a refuse room. It's a, it's a room where you have um, the, the, uh, uh, the chute that you throw the trash in, right? Crazy place to have this access panel. But they open it up, and inside, there's a bunch of wiring not hooked up properly, whatever. That turned out to be the wiring for the electrical lighting in the building. And so the electrician knows what he's doing. He disconnects the stuff that needs to be disconnected, makes all the wiring safe. Voila, the lighting that they didn't need in the building goes off. And um, the net savings was 90% of that money. They now their electrical bill is $3,000 instead of $30,000. So they save $27,000 in annual electric bills. So, of course, the condo now thinks we walk on water um, and we let them think that. But in truth, we are just doing our job. We are looking, for our, looking out for our client. Uh, we're being responsive and responsible. That's our job. And it's not that hard, folks. It's, it's just be, use your common sense. Don't drop the ball. Look, I love um, Robert Caro talks about turning every page and turn every page. Look under every rock. Make sure you know what's going on at the building so you can take care of the client and keep your job unlike the manager that we took over from. So that's my little story about untangling bad management. Wow. All right. I have a few follow on questions <laughs> for you on that, because it sounds like right off the bat, you've saved them about $50,000 yep. in the year. Yep. Um, and I'm sure you're going to continue to discover a few more quirks along the way. By the way, this is like a board member's worst nightmare, right? All, all of these things as far as a bad transition, I feel like I hear all the time from board members and having done it myself, we also kind of being on a board that felt the same way. Um, it's, it's very difficult to transition when you feel like things are going to fall through the cracks. The management company that I don't trust today is right. There's a reason you're looking for something else. The management company that is not doing well by me right now may not do well by the next one. That's going along. Now, how frequent is that for you that you kind of run into kind of issues with transitions? I'd say about 50% of the time. Um, you know, most people in the property management business are good people and they're trying to do a good job. It's a hard job. There's a million details here. But most people are honest and they recognize turnover is normal. It happens. You know, you lose clients, you gain clients. Hopefully the trend is up, but meaning a, a net adding clients. But, you know, it, 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 you need what goes around comes around. If you're going to have bad vibes and not treat people right, the word's going to get out, man. Everybody talks. We have online reviews now. So it's not cool to, to not do the right thing. So half of the managers we take over from and when we are taken over from, it happens once in a while, we always provide whatever they ask for whenever they need it and provide, be as transparent as we can and be honest and straightforward. Half the managers don't do that. And that's the case here where they didn't give us good data. We had a dig, dig, dig. And we discovered a lot of dirt under in our digging because they were doing a bad job. So generally people do the right thing. Sometimes they yeah. do. You know, owning your own company, obviously mistakes can happen, right? You kind of always want to go in a little bit with best intentions on things, right? Maybe somebody just didn't know what they were doing or, um, but what can, like, I guess, what safeguards are you saying I want to implement in my own business to make sure that that doesn't happen with somebody that's newer to the game? Are you asking with regard to a property management company yeah, or a board? Yeah, like, you know, just uh, somebody that really... I think it's hard unless you're in the details, right? And you're, you're go, like you said, going page by page to actually realize huh, something's, something's a little off um, here. And you obviously have a lot of experience to draw on to say, mm, building this size, electrical, electrical bill should look more like this than that. Right. Well, you know, experience is hard to replicate. You either have it or you don't. I think a way to compensate for that is to have a mentor to share information. I've, you know, I, I used to be in the information um, industry and I was a programmer years ago. <clears throat> and I always believed it's better to share information than not. <clears throat> Some people think holding information is makes them more powerful. I have the opposite view that sharing information 
makes me per be perceived as somebody who knows stuff and and Lindsay or whoever might ask Josh a question because they know he's a nice guy and he's going to share information. So that's the way to be. That's the way I am. And so I'm happy if, if anybody listening to this would like to ask me a question, whether you're a board member or a property manager. I love knowing people and sharing information. That's how I've grown in the industry. And um, uh, that's a good vibe thing for me. So so that's a way to deal with the fact that you may not know what I know. Why don't you ask me? I'll be happy mm -hmm. to share that information with you. There's so much to this business, whether it's physical stuff like what we're talking about in the building, the electrical system or financial stuff um, or people stuff. There's there's a lot of aspects of, a lot this. of variables. Yep. Just like in life. And, uh, you know, it, there is a lot to it. It's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess one lesson there is like trust your gut a little bit. Right. If something's not looking quite right, not feeling like that makes sense, dig a little bit deeper. I think so. Into it. OK. And then how, how do you think the board, I guess you're working with this board now, are you providing any coaching and training? Obviously they were out of the loop on this. And so, you know, and, and, and that happens, right? I think a lot of boards are not often um, people that have expertise in running a building <laughs> before. So they don't know what to look for. They obviously did have a sense that we, we needed a management company though. So they had a little bit of an idea. How's that going? Now? So there are two aspects of, um, uh, being out of the loop, so to speak, with regard to board members. One is um, many board members do not want to do anything. They want the property manager to make all the decisions. And we'll, we do whatever we can and, and take up as much slack as we can. But at the end of the day, um, of course, the, um, the board is, it, it's the board's money. It's the condo's money. And they really need to be participating at some level with regard to decision making. Um, and, you know, Property management is a real relationship business, um, meaning you need to communicate as in any human relationship. If you don't communicate, it's not going to go well. So we hope that the board does meet with us and, and communicate what their concerns are and, and answer questions when we, we don't know the answer. The other aspect um, of a board uh, participation, so to speak, with regard to maybe management's not doing so well or when they are, the board needs to pay attention at some level. We provide monthly reporting and the board should at least look at it. And once you've looked at it, of course, you kind of have it. You have that PDF or whatever it is, and maybe you want to save that. We provide a portal where it's always saved. Another aspect is the bank account. We provide view access to uh, the condo's bank accounts and, and the board, somebody on the board, the treasurer perhaps, ought to have that access and ought to look at the account once in a while and know uh, what's going on at some level. And then finally, there's documents. You know, keep track of those documents. You, you might want to put them on a private server or just a place where you can get them again. So again, if things go south or you don't know what's going on, uh, you at least have that backup to share with new management or for your own edification to know how much money you have and what the, the, the last, what the board last said and that sort of thing. It's, you want to try to keep track of, of what's going on. It's a small business and you need to keep track of stuff. That's great. Um, did you ever talk to the other, the other kind of executives at the other management company? Um, you know, I always go to the top when I have problems with a company and yes, I, I reached out to the president of that outgoing company in the story I told, and maybe I heard from them once. Mostly what they did is just shunt it over to somebody lesser than top executive. So they didn't want to engage. Um, uh, uh, we try, uh, but you know, you can only try so many times and look, if you're demonstrating, you don't want to talk to us. We're going to move on because we've got to take care of our client. So we tried. Uh, in that case, uh, the, the heads of the company were not very responsive. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes sense. All right. Let's talk about two insurance policies. Is there any any feasible reason <laughs> that they should have had two policies? None at all. Um, it, it looks... Um, um, deceptive. It looks fraudulent. Um, you're taking money for something they don't need. So why would that be? Um, I don't need to second guess what the management was doing. Who, who knows? What it really looks like is they weren't paying attention. It looks like incompetence. It looks like, you know, just nobody was, was smart. I mean, <laughs> it's one thing not to know you have two policies, but you're paying the bills, man. Somebody's approving those bills and two finance agreements. Really? How? I mean, did you know what the finance agreements were for? Obviously not, because nobody who knew, who understands what insurance is for a condo and what finance agreements are, would approve those without at least looking at them and understanding. So that really suggests incompetence. Mm. To me. 
Mm -hmm. Was this even a building that needed a financing agreement for insurance? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, p uh, condos get finance agreements because they don't have the cash up front uh, to pay for them. A finance agreement means you're paying interest on, you're borrowing some money to pay for the right insurance. Right now, interest ain't cheap. <laughs> right on. Yeah. And and for these policies, it's, it's astronomical. It's like 9%. It's not the mortgage rate. It's very high. So... Um, did they need it? They don't need it now because we've we've right 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 at the ship. They have uh, uh, appropriate money to be cash flow positive and whatnot. Back then, it's a little hard to say because again, no records. I don't even know where what their what their uh, uh, how much money they had in the bank at that time. Uh, so it's very hard to know whether they needed the finance agreement. You would have thought. I would have thought that the management company got the board's approval for the finance agreement, in which case then the board also may not be paying attention. Again, not good. You got to pay attention to your money. Um, you want management to be honest and to be doing the job. You, you trust that they know that you, you don't need two finance agreements. But again, it looks like nobody was paying attention. Wow. I mean, I feel especially in a condo situation, knowing the building's financials, I mean, it's it's the fiduciary responsibility, right? Absolutely. I mean, we are fiduciaries. And if, if we don't do that properly, we're dead. I mean, we have to manage people's money properly. And honestly, we have to be above reproach. And of course, we carry insurance. We carry crime, crime coverage because sometimes bad things happen. But yes, it's very important. Um, you know, I always say property management is not just property management. We're not just managing the building, managing money managing projects, managing people. There's a lot to it. And you got to balance all that stuff out. I mean, yeah, it's not simple. That's for sure. You're wearing a lot of hats at any given moment. So that's why there's a job here. You know, uh, <laughs> if, the, if people could do it themselves, some people do, but then we wouldn't have a company. But well, we have a I've been in, you mentioned the two different kinds of situations that boards run into. I've sat on both sides <laughs> of that. Um, one building, I, when, when we left and I left the board, they just hired a management company because it, <laughs> it, it usually is right. You need somebody that is doing it all. Right. And, that, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you're a busy person. It's like if you can do that, and do your life and manage a condo, that's fantastic. Not everybody can do that. And as we just said, it's really complicated. And there's stuff that only people who are in the business would know. An example of that is compliance, knowing all the local laws that are changing all the time. That's a job unto itself. We have a single individual who just focuses on that. So it's there's a lot to know. Also. That's not a fun way to use your spare time for a board member. <laughs> That's fair. That's, there, there are better things to do in life. There are better sure. things to do with your time. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today, Josh. How can people get in touch with you? Thanks for asking. So it's easy. Uh, uh, our web is brownstonepropertygroup.com. My email is josh, J-O-S-H, at brownstonemgt.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. And I th I'm hoping people will take you up on your offer to share some information and knowledge as Happy well. To talk. We'd, we'd love that. Great. That's today's episode of If These Walls Could Talk. Super is the AI-powered communication and workflow tool for property managers. To learn more about Super, visit us at www.hiresuper.com. To share a story you have for a future episode, email us at hello at hiresuper.com. <laughs>